Hi, welcome back to Eating Well in the Workplace web series. My name is Krupa Patel. I'm a registered dietitian with Employee Wellness, and today we'll be talking about healthy beverages in the workplace. Let's get started. You may have heard, eat your calories, don't drink them. We want you to save our calories for food, obviously the good stuff, versus using them up on sugary beverages. Calories that sneak in through beverages are usually forgotten. This is especially true when we are talking about alcoholic or sugary drinks, including fruit juices, energy drinks, and soda. These highly sweetened beverages are shortcuts for feeling good. You get that great sugar high and feel awesome for only about 30 seconds though. You think you have more energy to get more done in the same amount of time, but in reality, these shortcuts just don't cut it. And they certainly don't contribute to healthy nutrition. Maybe water tastes a little bland after you've sampled the insane sugariness of Mount Dew, but in the long run, water will help you stay hydrated, and hydration means feeling better, which in turn means avoiding headaches, bad moods, and falling asleep. Fun fact, our human body is made up of around 60% water, so it's essential for maintaining healthy bodily functions. Making sure that we get enough water each day is one of the simplest and most beneficial steps that we can take to maintain our overall health. Lack of adequate hydration can impair mood and concentration, making it difficult to focus and perform the best cognitive ability. Studies show that even the mildest form of dehydration can impair many aspects of our brain function. So drinking enough water ensures that we may maintain healthy energy levels and alertness to power us through the working day. So let's talk about caffeine. Many of us can't imagine starting the day without a cup of coffee. One reason may be that it supplies us with a jolt of caffeine, which is a mild stimulant to the central nervous system that quickly boosts our alertness and energy levels. One cup, or about eight ounces of brewed coffee, contains about 95 milligrams of caffeine. The same amount of instant coffee contains about 60 milligrams of caffeine, and decaffeinated coffee contains only about four milligrams. One shot of espresso contains about 65 milligrams of caffeine, one cup of black tea contains 47 milligrams of caffeine, and green tea contains about 28 milligrams. A 12 ounce can of regular or diet dark cola contains about 40 grams of caffeine, and the same amount of Mount Dew contains about 55 milligrams of caffeine. One cup or eight ounces of energy drink contains about 85 milligrams of caffeine, However, the standard energy drink serving is about 16 ounces, which doubles the caffeine to about 170 milligrams. Energy shots are much more concentrated than the drinks. So a small two ounce shot contains about 200 milligrams of caffeine. Wow, that's insanely a lot. In the US, adults consume an average of 135 milligrams of caffeine daily, which is about one and a half cups of coffee. The FDA considers 400 milligrams, which is about four cups of brewed coffee, a safe amount of caffeine for a healthy adult to consume. Caffeine is absorbed within 45 minutes of consuming and peaks in the bloodstream anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours. Caffeine is broken down mainly in the liver. It can remain in the bloodstream anywhere from one and a half to nine and a half hours. Caffeine in beverages such as coffee, tea, and soda is quickly absorbed in the gut and dissolves both in the body's water and fat molecules. It is even able to cross into our brains. Food with a fiber component can delay how quickly caffeine in the bloodstream peaks. Therefore, drinking your morning coffee on an empty stomach might give you a quicker energy boost than if you drink it while eating breakfast. People have different tolerances and responses to caffeine, partly due to genetic differences. Consuming caffeine regularly, such as drinking a cup of coffee every day, can promote caffeine tolerance in some people. So the side effects from caffeine may decrease over time. On to added sugars. Sugary drinks, which is also characterized as sweetened beverages or soft drinks, can refer to any beverages with added sugar or sweeteners such as high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, fruit juice concentrates, and more. They are commonly found in coffee drinks, fruit juices, sodas, teas, fruit punches, lemonades, and even sports drinks. There are 4.2 grams of sugar in a single teaspoon. Now imagine scooping seven to 10 teaspoons full of sugar and dumping it into your 12 ounce of glass of water. Does that sound too sweet? 
You may be surprised to learn that's how much added sugar is in the typical can of soda. That being said, the American Heart Association recommends limiting added sugars to 6 teaspoons per day for women and children and 9 teaspoons per day for men. When it comes to ranking beverages from our health, sugary drinks fall at the bottom of the list because they provide so many calories and virtually no other nutrients. People who drink sugary beverages do not feel as full as if they had eaten some calories from solid food and research indicates that they also don't compensate for the high caloric content of these beverages by eating less food. Beyond weight gain, routinely drinking these sugary loaded beverages can increase from type 2 diabetes to heart disease and other chronic diseases. Furthermore, higher consumption of sugary beverages has been linked with an increased risk of premature death. Low calorie sweeteners are sweeteners that contain few to no calories but they have higher intensity of sweetener per gram than sugar sweetened beverages with calories. These include artificial sweeteners such as aspartame and sucralose. These beverages are usually labeled sugar-free or diet. The health effects of low calorie sweeteners are inconclusive with research showing mixed findings. The American Heart Association and the American Diabetes Association noted that further research on the effects of low calorie sweeteners and health conditions are needed. So let's talk about how we can make a better choice when choosing beverages. Maybe try to drink coffee with meals to minimize the caffeine rush. Or cut back on the caffeine if you notice any jitters, anxiety, your heart racing, upset stomach, nausea, headache, or insomnia. You can even swap out your coffee creamer for cream, half and half, or even milk. Try to reduce the size of your coffee and the sweeteners you add to it. So maybe you can opt for only half a pump to a pump of the sweetener versus the standard amount that it comes with. Keep your caffeine before noon or during the first half of your night shift. And try to choose unsweetened beverages. You can even try to infuse flavor or use sparkling water or unsweetened tea and juices. You can try to dilute your child's fruit juices with water. Try to skip the sports drinks and maybe even choose Propel or coconut water if you need something with added electrolytes. The best option is water, but you can always try to make it fun by adding fruit to it like lemon, berries, or even mint or cucumber. Thank you for watching today's webinar. This concludes the Eating Well in the Workplace web series.